Welcome to History in Six, a place where we sample history in six minute increments. I'm your host, Tima Lindell. Today we're gonna to talk about Jonathan Edwards, one of America's first great thinkers. Time is short, let's jump into it. Jonathan Edwards was born in October 5th, 1703, the fifth of 11 children, 11, that's still crazy to me. He entered Yale in 1716 at just under the age of 13, a prodigy for sure. Although he studied theology for two years after his graduation from Yale, Edwards continued to be interested in science. Although many European scientists and American clergymen found the implications of science pushing them towards deism. Deism is the belief in the existence of a supreme being, specifically of a creator who does not intervene in the universe. They just created it and is doing its thing. It was accepting the existence of a creator on the basis of reason, but rejected belief in, say, a supernatural deity who interacted with humankind. Edwards, on the other hand, believed that the natural world was evidence of God's masterful design. Edwards was fascinated by the discoveries of Isaac Newton and other scientists of the period. And before he worked full-time as a pastor in Northampton, he wrote on various topics in natural philosophy, including light, optics, and addition to spiders. While he was worried about those of his contemporaries who seemed preoccupied by the materialism and faith in reason alone, he considered the laws of nature to be derived from God and demonstrated God's wisdom and care. Edwards' written sermons and theological treatises emphasized the beauty of God and the role of aesthetics in spiritual life. But it was his theological work where he made the most impact by helping to kick off the Great Awakening in the columns. In 73-74, there was a spiritual revival in his hometown of Northampton. Between 300 and 1100 youths were newly admitted to the church. This great conversion of people allowed him to study the process as someone who was interested in science. In 1737, he ended up publishing Faithful Narrative of the Surprising Work of God, which was kind of his findings from his study. He found that people interested in Christianity try to be good and follow scripture to avoid sin and earn their salvation. They will inevitably fail to meet these strict standards, leading them to despair and feeling of inherent sinfulness. Those who were successfully converted experienced God's grace and understood that forgiveness comes through faith in Jesus' sacrifice and not necessarily personal efforts to be good. And this revelation brings joy, a new spiritual understanding, and a desire to share the faith and abandon sin. In 1741, he gave his most famous speech, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. It would be considered today a fire and brimstone speech. But the reality is the people in New England at the time knew the remedy to avoid damnation. The goal of a speech like this one was to encourage them to seek it. The fire and brimstone was to kind of get them off their keisters and go ahead and start seeking salvation. And this emphasis for religion was very American. Edwards differed from some of the Calvinists of that period by emphasizing the importance of a personal conversion experience. He believed people shouldn't just intellectually accept doctrines, but have a genuine change of heart and a newfound love for God. Edwards saw God's holiness and beauty as central to the religious experience. Edwards saw the bounty and beauty that these American colonies afforded the people. And he believed that experiencing this, this beauty, this bounty, could move poor people towards conversion, deeper faith. Edwards believed that emotions played a crucial role in religious life, but he wasn't advocating for uncontrolled emotionalism, but for genuine love towards God. Edwards believed that reason and faith could work together. He used his reasoning skills to explore the theological concepts of the day while maintaining a strong foundation in faith himself. And as these philosophical underpinnings that kicked off the Great Awakening. His focus on personal conversion resonated with people seeking a deeper connection to faith. 
His incorporation of emotional appeals in his sermons helped people connect with the message on a deeper level. And it was his sophisticated theology which provided a framework for understanding the emotional experiences of the revival. And even though the colony was moving towards secularism in its government, it was Edwards' philosophy that helped bring people back to religion and kicked off what has been known as the Great Awakening, which we'll look at in future episodes of History in Six. If you've enjoyed this episode, tell a friend about us. Hit the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to get future content. And as always, have a great day if you want to.